Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Romancing Grenada Caracol and Piti Matnik. Today, we're going to be Romancing Grenada Caracol and Piti Matnik with Coach Ian Ferguson. Hi, Coach. Hi, how you doing? Good morning. I'm Good all morning. right. I'm all right. I just want to first say, before we go on, I know it would come from you and I, just to send some uh, love and, and warmest greetings back home, our condolences to people who lost family members and um, our prayers to people who are going through this right now. Um, we hope they come through. Uh, today, uh, Coach, you're here with, I will let you tell me about the people, you brought, your guests on the panel, or who's going to be telling me all the wonderful things you did. So first, tell me about them, and then I'll come back and talk a little bit about what I know about you. Okay, yeah, I'm here with, um, with, uh, with uh, Isaiah, and his, well, his mom is on the line too, and on, on the Zoom call. And I have also, I have Emmanuel. Emmanuel is the dad of, of Gabriel. He's also on, on the call. And I have um, Richie and his son, Aiden. And they're, they're on the call as well. So um, I like to have the parents and the kids involved. You know what I mean? Because it, it's, a, it's easier when you have the parents involved. And these parents are very much involved in their, in their, in their, um, their child's lives. And, um, I'm just trying to bring tennis to the community and, you know, increase their, their self-esteem and, you know, things like that and point them in the right direction so they don't go off rail. All so. right. So <laughs> first, because um, when you introduced them, we, they didn't get a chance to say hi. So I'll start with who you started with. You started with uh, Isaiah and his mom, Janice. Hi, Isaiah. And hi, Janice. Hi. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Mom Hi. disappeared. No, no, no. <laughs> right here. Good morning again. And welcome. Welcome to Romance in Grenada, Caracol, and Piti Matnik. Mr. Emmanuel um, Erskine, and yes. your son is Gabriel, who's not with us at the moment. Okay. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay. And then we're going to go on in. Uh, Coach, sorry, you didn't say who. Um, who Aiden was, Aiden and his dad, and Aiden and his dad have a, a kind of unusual name for me. So it's Husman. Hi, Aiden, and hi, Dad. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Very good. And we understand Aiden is a tennis um, finalist, a STF finalist. What does that mean? Scarborough Tennis Federation. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Congratulations. And thank you all for being here to support Coach. Thank so, you so much. Um, being as we're, the channel is about romance in Grenada, and uh, Coach Ian is from Grenada. He's from St. George's, or the capital city of Grenada, and he's from a place called Grenville Street. I did a little bit of a search for your name. Um, I know from our conversation and from what people are telling me, you, Coach Ian, were uh, Grenada's junior table tennis champion in the 1970s. Uh, what year was that? Do you remember? Would have been 75. That's like 46 years ago, a long time ago. <laughs> we it's still, it's those memories we will never forget. So we want to keep, we want to keep them alive. We want to keep them alive. And we want to keep alive the contributions you've made in giving us all that excitement at the time. I know Grenada was big on tennis. Um, uh, for the longest while, I think Ray Roberts, you would have known oh, yes. uh, about, yeah, yeah had a, quite a legacy there. Yes, 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 absolutely. So in, in researching you, I you don't have to tell me this if you don't want to, but I typed your name in and it came up, uh, your parents' uh, obituaries. So uh, my condolences to you, you lost your mom and dad a year apart, 2015, yeah. 2016. Yeah, nine months apart. They were married for 72 years and they were together for more than 72 years. I stopped counting Ooh. up. So we have we have um, eight kids and I'm the last of eight. So I, I've noticed that. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, that's a dynamic family and a dynamic legacy. 72 years. And I noticed yeah, yeah. they were both in their 90s when they passed. Yeah, we, had, we had them for a very long time. Every Every Sunday after church, we go over to our parents' house up at um, Victoria Park and Finch, 
and just about everybody would drop by. Sometimes just my family members, sometimes friends of the family, and we'd have the cocoa tea. You know the, the stuff that we have in Grenada, the cocoa tea and the and the and the and the, and the sauce and fry bakes or something. Yeah. Fry bakes and you know that sort of thing. So people who are here in Toronto and they dine for that stuff, they would they would actually you know drop by at times. You know, friends of ours, just family members and friends. You know, and we just sometimes after church we there at twelve and we there until six sometimes just reminiscing and old i think that's what kept them alive for so long like they had something to look forward to every sunday and they were getting up in age so they got up into their 90s we had them for a very long time we used to put them up on a pedestal and cherish them and bring them into the conversations and it was all good it was all good that's excellent i mean and the coca tea and the, have you ever shared it with your, uh, your your students you should have a cocoa tea and bakes morning or something like that and sauce. <laughs> yeah, they're still around. They were still around for sure. I'd bring them in for sure. Yeah, but yeah. Well, I mean, you can continue the legacy with your with your 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 students now. I should do that. Bring out the cocoa <laughs> tea and the bull and um, the oil dung and things like that. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. yes, yes. Sir. <laughs> so. So gotcha. you, um, maybe your students don't know, so I have to tell them, you went to PBC in Grenada, that's called Presentation Boys College. It's one of the most prestigious schools in the city. They're very um, athletic central. Um, did you represent the school when you were a tennis champion? Yes, yes. Whenever I I'd win, a, you know, a match or a tournament or something, they would, you know, mention the schools on the radio. So I got a lot of accolades on that. I'll be, you know, proud that you hear your name call, you know, Ian Ferguson won, you know, good God, Josh, 21, 15, 21, you know. And that's all, yeah, you hear stuff like that on the radio. So people always associate me with table tennis, you know. Even if I go back there now, they say, you still playing table tennis, you know. And I have to say, well, yeah, I do play, but I know I've, I've gravitated towards tennis as when I came to Canada many years um, ago. Yes, you sent me some pictures, which I'm going to try to share. Hopefully we get we get enough chance to share it because you have a lot of people here who can talk about you. Um, you do table tennis and lawn tennis at the moment. And um, I see, actually, probably now I can just share a picture and then we're going to talk because I think you have, um, you have Aiden in the picture too. In yeah, that's when he won the um, STF, when he went to the STS um, tournament, and I gave him three lessons. He's such an athletic kid. I showed him how to serve one lesson. The next lesson, I showed him how to hit a forehand. Then I showed him how to hit a backhand. And every after each lesson, we just rally, right? Then he would keep the rally going, and you know he's always trying to keep the rally going. And you know he has lots of uh, lots of stamina. And mm. So. Um, we said, well, let's see how he does in his age group, right? So we put him into the tournament, dropped him in the deep end, and he, and he was just wearing out these kids. You know, he would play them and they would get tired because he didn't have the skill like them because they all they did was play tennis for three, five years, right? And he's just yeah. took a lesson and just entered the tournament. We didn't know how far he'd go, but he got it all the way to the finals. And the guy who beat him is a guy who plays OTA at the higher level. And, um, you know, and Aiden was crying afterwards. That's how... That's how into it he was, you know. He's never lo- he's the guy who never really lost most things, right? He'd okay. run for his school and he would win. So he's always a winning guy, you know. So uh-huh. he just went into it with that thing that I can beat him, you know. He had that belief in himself. So it was really touching to see how he um he uh, he um how he felt after he lost that last. So I say all you have to do is practice tennis and you'll be able to beat these guys, you know. Right, so, right. That's that's the one of the key things. Um somebody named Charles Hood is trying to come on. I just want to share a little to see if uh, uh, share the screen the picture. Cool. He's the one who started everything. He's the one who took me under his wing and um, you know embraced me and and um, you know had belief in me and then I had started have belief in myself and that's how I was able to be a junior champion in Grenada. So I just thought oh. I'd bring him in and give him the accolades and now I'm telling him hey I'm passing on the torch to these young ones here. And mm-hmm. proud of it. So this is Aiden here in this. Am I sharing my screen with you? Yes, yes. So this is Aiden. Congratulations, Aiden. Hi. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's uh, it's been a whirlwind, and uh, Ian's been fabulous and phenomenal with with Aiden and his development in athletic sports, especially in 
in tennis. He's one of uh, Aiden's biggest believers. Um, and I don't think Aiden would be here without um, having Ian as a, as a mentor and a leader and as a, as a tennis coach and better yet, even as a better person. Mm. Watch Ian. We're, we're very grateful and blessed to have you as part of our lives. Thanks, Thank coach. All right, that's that's great. I'll stop sharing for a while um, to acknowledge uh, Mr. Charles Hood. Oh, okay, maybe he's not ready. So uh, now we're going to talk a little bit. Um, Ian, I know you do a lot of community work, and and the people here on the channel on the panel are a testimony to that. But you also did make some big contributions back home in terms of, um, you know, sending stuff as whatever you can, equipment and stuff back home. Um, you you and then you said to me you sent all these things back home, and you wanted the only persons probably of all the people I talked to that would send uh, things back home who got a lovely thank you letter from the Tennis Association back home, which made me feel very good about the, what's happening back home because most people tell me like, oh, they get the thing and what they get is complaints, complaints. You know, you send one too big, one too small, you know, so, stuff like that. And I appreciate the work you continue to do. Let's um, thank you for, for aid and, and, and the party is set off on and in you giving them sorry somebody is speaking oh maybe mr hood was trying to get on um but let's talk a little bit now Isaiah, you sent me a video with Isaiah, which i'm not able to i'm not sure i'm able to to show it let me just see if i have it i think it's isaiah in the video yes yeah, that's isaiah when he first started out Oh no, I can't, I can't show it. Sorry, I got, I'm getting something else. <laughs> okay, sorry, Isaiah, I don't have the video with you, but I, I, I'm not able to show it, but tell me a little bit about you and your relationship with coach and how you got into tennis. Was he the one that brought you in or how, how did it go? How, how did that come about? Okay, um, so, when I was five years old, my mom brought me into tennis, thinking um, you know, tennis really helped me with my um, self-esteem and social skills by meeting new people. Wow. And I just like to just play the games, the fun games, such as detention. And um, Coach Ian has really been um, a good person to me and a good coach to me. He, wow. he um, showed me new skills to practice on so I could become more better and better. Uh, one day I'll reach a professional tennis player. Oh, so that's the goal. Oh, wow. So I, I saw that video. It was a nice little video. But, and you seem very shy and reserved in that video. So I'm watching you here today and you look like a professional, like we're doing a professional tennis interview right now. <laughs> So I think, I think tennis is helping and I can tell from the chair you're sitting on, you're a professional gamer maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have to. Sorry, mom. Oh, I just wanted to, um, to say, yes, you're right. He was very timid, um, reluctant to try anything new. Um, Coach um, Ian does live within our community. Um, so he's somebody that we see often around the community. So it was easy to say, oh, um, he gave us the card to say, you know, I coach tennis and, you know, come on out sometime. There was no pressure, but mm -hmm. because it was in the community, it was accessible. Um, he, as I said, he's uh, very kind. And um, Isaiah went, met some other children. Um, coach is very patient and very skilled in what he does. Uh, so it was, uh, he quickly, Isaiah quickly liked it and then came out more and more often. And, you know, like five years later, you know, he'll show up on the weekend sometimes to um to play at one of the, the tennis clubs here with um, Coach Ian. 
Wow. Yeah. That's an impressive story because yeah, to watch the video, which uh, I'm sorry, I can't share from there to here is I can see a mass improvement. So do you know Aiden as well, Isaac? I think so. Oh, so you're, you're in different groups probably. Probably. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you look like you're around the same age. Mm. You're 10 years yeah. old, 10 years old, grade five. Yeah, you, know, you know what happened is Aiden, Aiden is so um, wanted by other coaches, like the hockey coach wants him, the baseball coach wants him, the track and field coach wants him. So he's he's really a high-end skill athlete, right? Like he, he, for instance, the dad would tell me on a Sunday, he would just after dinner say, hey, dad, I want to go for a run. Who does that? You know what I mean? So I'm thinking like he would definitely be a professional athlete in whatever he chooses later on in life. Because he doesn't have, you don't have to push him into it. He's always the one who's pushing the dad. The dad, that, you know, he's coming from work, he's tired. The dad has to get on his bike and do a 10K ride because he didn't want to run, right? Things like that. He's very, he's very driven. Yeah, self, self motivated. Very nice, very nice. Thank you. So let's talk now with Mr. Emmanuel Erskine. I, I, for some reason, I like your last name very much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so Mr. Uh, Erskine, tell me about Gabriel. You said you don't have Gabriel on because he's very... Well, to, to be honest with you, Gabriel just practically just woke up. And <laughs> um, he wakes up he's he's hyper and i just i wanted to make sure that coach had a very successful <laughs> um, uh, interview this morning so i thought it would be best that i speak on gabriel's behalf okay. um I, i'll tell you one thing is that gabriel took the coach immediately um and it, it took us all by surprise because my wife and i had been trying to figure out what gabriel could do or would like to do Mm -hmm. um he gabriel does martial arts um he's in uh, gymnastics and tennis now not on any kind of professional level but just to keep him active because of his amount of energy mm -hmm. the thing is we didn't know he was going to like tennis but i can tell you this when i tell gabriel that he should come with me to go play tennis first thing he'll ask me is if coach is going to be there and if coach isn't going to be there, then he doesn't want to play. Mm. Because coach, coach has a very, very special way of communicating with him to the point that with a kid who has very little attention span, coach is actually able to keep him on the field, on, on, the, on the court for 45 minutes mm. and has his full attention for 45 minutes. For me, that is quite amazing because I can't keep Gabriel playing with me any one particular thing for 45 minutes but he can come off and um, he can listen he can he can take instruction that is all shocking to me because Gabriel doesn't take instruction very well so this is testament to coach and the way he approaches children mm -hmm. not so much not so much the game but the way he understands kids and their psychology he knows how to get to them he knows how to bring them back to focus um that is what i have taken from the you know few months that we have had with coach is that he knows how to connect with kids uh, i keep saying that gabriel is really hyper it's because gabriel is very hyper but to be able to see coach actually have this child be so attentive and respond, you know, and even when Gabriel from time to time goes off track, the way coach is able to bring him back, not with, you know, the way we would approach it by, you know, screaming and shouting and being frustrated, but, you know, it's, it's really amazing to see. Mm -hmm. And so it's given me this confidence that, you know, it is something that Gabriel could actually do and enjoy. Um, I, I played tennis as a child. My wife, I taught my wife how to play tennis. So we actually, you know, consider ourselves as a tennis family, but 
having see, seeing Gabriel actually taking to it and responding to coach is is very hopeful, very encouraging, and you know I I I was I'm very happy to be here to give testament to uh, to coach and his uh, his abilities. Thank you, thank you. That that is great. I mean, news for me. It's good to know. We like to know too that people who start off and accomplish something are able to share and impact. And you probably just heard the coach has experience with people. He's the last child of eight. Mm -hmm. So he's studied kids. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, was, probably studied well, I was four years old. I had nieces and nephews. So I had to take them to church. I was to start acting up. I didn't know what to do, right? And then one guy took the kid, uh, you know, he started crying. I'm like, shh, don't cry, don't shh. And I'm eight years old and he's like four, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the guy took him to the back of the church, right? Mm -hmm. and I said, man, I didn't know I could have done that, you know? <laughs> I could have taken him to the back of the church, right? So from then on, when they start acting up, I just walk them out to the back of the church, right? Mm -hmm. you know, right. Like that. You kind of learn at an early age how to handle kids, right? Yeah. So now I'm learning something uh, new about you too. You, well, you said that earlier. You go to church. Um, you were a church goer from since back home. You live very close to Church Street in yeah, Grenada. Exactly, exactly, exactly. At six o'clock in the evening, we start to run. We start to take a. You know, everybody wants to be the one to ring the bell at six o'clock. There's a church bell, so you could go and run up the hill and ding dong. You know, six o'clock. Which, which church? Uh, the Catholic Church, a cathedral. Oh, cathedral. Yes, they had a bell. It wasn't automatic. You had to, somebody had to ring that bell at 6, 6 p.m. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it still rings. It's such a wonderful song. But, um, yeah, in, oh, you went to PBC, so it had to be Catholic, yes. PBC is a Catholic school, and you're right there. I want to share with you, with the panel here, um, what you look like back then. Um, that was in the 70s we we're talking about when coach used to run up the hill to um, ring the bell. You're going to be surprised, Isaiah and Aiden. <laughs> I'm just going to share a beautiful, beautiful picture with you. Just give me a moment to load. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Let's share now. I'm going to share. Share screen. Do you guys recognize uh, this fellow here? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That is your coach. <laughs> See the uh -huh. afro? Michael Jackson. That's right. <laughs> Back then I love it, buddy. I love it. Michael, everybody want to be like Mike. Everybody yeah. wanted to be like Mike. <laughs> That's amazing, oh. coach. And um, these are just some other pictures you sent me. Uh, Sorry, prior. Uh, let's see if I could go back. I, I noticed, Coach, you, I mean, this is you here. You made an easy transition. Was it easy from table tennis to lawn tennis, or you still do both? Yeah, I still do both. Uh, you know, I play uh, lawn tennis mostly in the summertime, but it's very mm -hmm. expensive to play lawn tennis in the wintertime. So I, I, uh, I play table tennis in the wintertime in the local community center, or wherever, okay. you know, there's table tennis being played just to get a, you know, get a little exercise and get the endorphins going. Because in the wintertime, you really don't do much. So you want to still stay active. So we, we play table tennis in the wintertime. Okay. Yeah. I thought I had the, the one with you. You sent me one with you in your winter stuff playing lawn tennis, but apparently it didn't come up either. I, I load all your pictures to a file where I could easily access them. So... Maybe yeah, we, something. Those because of the COVID, you know, so I wear the mask. Yes, uh, I noticed that. So close. So a bunch of us, maybe five of us, we we go outdoors and still play tennis in the winter time. But we mm -hmm. choose nice days when it's plus five degrees Celsius and sunny, and the sun is coming down. So you know, you have on your coat and your glove. You can feel that radiance of the sun. Get, you still get that vitamin D, and you know, and the, and the ground's dry. So we put on a miniature net and just play. So, so yeah. let me ask you. So I'm um, going back to Grenada a little. You left Grenada in 1976. 
and that yeah. picture was your passport, one of those pictures that were your passport pictures. Yeah. Um, yeah. What drove you to table tennis though? Because you had the parks right on the next side there, you had track and field, you had football, cricket, all the, the, the more popular sports back then. Table tennis weren't very popular from my memory. I don't know, you can change, you can tell me more about it. Yeah, Why so table what tennis? Happened, what happened was um, I, I was born at a lot of part of the of the year, right? So um, I was I was born in November. Mm. Right? So, so you gotta imagine the kids in my class, well, you know, there are kids born January, February, March, April, May, right? You know, and at those ages. The kids who were born in the early part of the year, six to nine months is a lot. You know what I mean? Like they're bigger, than, they're bigger and stronger than me, right? Because they're, you know, they you know, it doesn't look like a lot when you're like 15 and 16, right? But when you're like five, six, seven, eight, you know, that little edge they had, you know. So I can compete in, you know, the cricket and I, I played cricket, I played soccer, I played basketball, you know, we ran and do all this sort of thing. But the, the, the bigger kids are the ones who were born earlier. They, they had that advantage on me. So I think even one time my mom was looked at me and said, you know, the guys that in my age and everything like that, I say, yeah, you're not growing, you know, these guys, these guys are bigger than you, right? So I think when I got to like 14 or 15, that's when I kind of kind of got to their height and, you know, but they, um, so they had always had that advantage on me. So we play cricket, they would bowl faster than me or they, you know, hit the ball harder than me. I would just sort of bat and stay. I had good hand-eye coordination, so I stay in the wicket. But I'm not making a lot of runs, right? Because I can't hit the boundaries and like the, the, the other kids. So, so soccer, same thing, you know. I had good soccer skills. There are many soccer players on my street. So when I went to PBC, automatically they thought, well, this guy got to be able to play soccer, right? So I got on the team, but I couldn't kick the ball out or anything like that. So they put me in the goal. So I was a goalie for, because I had a good hand-eye coordination, I was a goalie for my under-16 um, PBC team. And... Um, so yeah, I did play those sports, but I noticed when I went to play table tennis at lunch break or after school, everybody would run to the table tennis table and, and PBC, right? Oh. So um, I noticed I was better than the, the kids in my age group, you know what I mean? Initially, I was always a little bit, you know, so I'm not stupid. If I, if I have a sport that I was better at, I would gravitate to that sport and not do the others as much, you know? Right. And I, that's how I got hooked on table tennis. And um, I went to a tournament and Charlie Hood must have saw me trying, you know, I was really trying to win and whatever. I think I, I won a, a trophy in that tournament and he must have seen that I had some abilities, right? So he started to come every Friday to my school and practice with me. That's, uh, so I just kind of brought him in just to give him that accolade that he, um, he was the one who actually helped me develop my tennis. And Charlie the Hood. Yes, the child I was trying to play, he had me develop it. Although it wasn't his style, he was more defensive, kind of combo attacking type of style. But I was all offensive, I always attacked the ball, right? So he helped me to develop that style. And that's where I was able to propel myself into being one of the better ones in Grenada. Great. I have to uh, switch a little now. Uh, you don't have to answer if you want, you don't want to. But here you have your players and your pa and the parents um, with you. It's not tradition that our parents back home used to support us like parents now do. Did you have your parents support? Did they take you to the tennis tournaments? Did they come and see you play? Did no, no, no. They, they, they were so busy putting the roof over the head and the, and the food on the table. They had no time to, you know, take me, drive me to the tournament or, you know, even watch me play. But when my name came up on the radio and stuff like that, I know they were proud, you know, so that's all that matters, you know, at that I time. I wonder what it was like, like for your dad. Kids parents were doing it, you know, it's like we all just played as kids together and, you know, you had these parents around, you know, it was mostly our friends and people who were into table tennis, or the sport you're playing that would be there, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, was, <laughs> but you came was, home, you come home with a trophy. Back then. Sorry? I say that was a norm back then for the parents <laughs> not to be so much involved. Oh, yes, you know? yes, but yes, yes. Involved, it would have been a, a plus. They would have stood up like, you know, stood out like a big, you know, they would have... <laughs> Well, I know my mom my mom was always involved my dad no but he had that big grin on his face if you came home with a trophy was that like that for you too um 
your, your dad would yeah and I, and I think he used to boast a little when he went to work you know <laughs> <laughs> he's a boast a little you know yeah yeah um, you know he's a, he's a little athlete you know he's you know he's, he, he says things like that with his colleagues at work but not so much around the house you know oh, okay all right all right <laughs> the inkling that he used to do a little boasting back especially when you went you, you pass common entrance or something you see got another one <laughs> <laughs> you know, things like that. <laughs> Common entrance was a big exam. You had to pass in order to go to secondary school. You didn't just go straight into secondary school back then. You had to pass this big exam in order to get in. Yeah, I think you. St I think you still have to. But for us, all time, it was it was a bigger deal. Big deal. Yeah, because it wasn't very many people. <laughs> exactly, and it was sad because some people, like you know, are late bloomers, right? I was a little of a consumer. So, um, you know, if you didn't pass it, that would just derail your, your, your choices, right? If you didn't mm -hmm. get the opportunities, well, so much less, you know, you have to go into some trade school or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Canada, you, have, you can try and try again until you get there. You, know? you, can, you can keep trying until you get to wherever you want to go. And you can do it even as an adult. If you didn't get to high school education, you can even go back, you know, and get what you didn't get when you were younger. Right. There's a, there's a safety net here for late bloomers. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So, Mr. Charlie Hood, are you hearing us? He is the coach, that, the person that helped you out. The, we have him on here now, right? Correct. Mr. Hood? It's... Does he have to unmute his, uh, his Zoom? No, he's not muted. Okay, I maybe I don't know, maybe his audio or something, but it's telling me he's fine. It's just his camera's off. Oh, that's sad. I would have loved to hear from him about uh, you, how, you know, what you would like as a as a student and so on. And I'm sure your your students would also like to hear that. <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice if you could come on and just say a few words. Yeah, it would, it would have been half an hour ago. Or more. Oh, so he's, know... he's typed. He's typing. He said, "Good morning." It might be a bit of a challenge, but, but I'm glad he's on, and I'm I'm happy that you were able to talk about him um, in coming on and helping you because I don't know that we had table tennis coaches back then either. Um, we just yeah, used to hear did, things on the radio. That's what I'm saying in life. Sometimes somebody has to help you, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like he was a coach of the, the school or he was just, you know, saw something in me and he, he, he in his kindness he, and his patience, he came to my school every Friday and it was a big deal. He was on a great international team at the time, right? So me playing with Charlie Hood every Friday evening separated me from kids my age. Because when they say, hey, he's playing with Charlie Hood, you know, <laughs> they're not going to even come try to beat me because they know, hey, this guy's not, even at my level, he's playing with Charlie Hood. You know That's I mean? another league, yeah. Okay, you know, so that just sort of propelled me. It was adults used to come and challenge me, not kids. You know, they would say, "You see this little kid here? Try to play him." And they would, maybe they'd bet. I bet you can't be this little kid right there. You know, and that was me. And I would play them, and usually I'd win against adults, right? So I'd play adults all the time. So I'm used to playing adults. And table tennis is one sport where I initially I just gravitated early because I realized it didn't matter how big or strong the person is because my colleagues were bigger and stronger than me. I was a skinny little scrawny kid, right? But I, I could play with, you know, just about everybody. It's, a, it's one of the greatest equalizer. If you can't return my serve, there's no way you can beat me, right? So I found mm -hmm. that out at a very early age. And I was able right. to have success after so I found that out. How did you transition into lawn tennis? Because everybody you have here are lawn tennis players. Okay, it was Arthur Ash. Arthur Ash won Wimbledon in 74, right? Right. And, you know, we, I saw a little clipping on a newspaper. I didn't see the match that Arthur Ash won, you know, and um, he was the first black, not, not, not black man to, to win at Wimbledon. I think there was a woman, Althea Gibson, who won mm -hmm. early on. And, you know, but in 74, when he won, it was a big thing. And not only that he won, he became number one in the world, right? So we said, you know, it's like when Tiger Woods won golf, a lot of black kids and black people start playing golf, right? So the same thing with when he won, a lot of black people, because tennis was more for the elites, right? It was not for, you know, right. 
who came from Grenville Street, you know, it was like, you know, the upper class, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, we had no opportunity to play any table tennis, right? And, you know, so uh, uh, nobody would, would um, encourage you to play table tennis, cricket and soccer, basketball, a little volleyball. So we played all those sports on the tennis court at PBC. That's what we didn't have a field. So we had a tennis court. And when the brothers who who were the ones who, um, the principal and the people who led the school, they were Catholic brothers. They weren't priests. They were brothers. They wouldn't see a mass or anything like that, but they were very religious and they went into the brotherhood. Uh, so that's why it was called uh, PBC. Some, some people call it Presentation Brothers College too as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. so anyway, they, they, they would play tennis every Sunday. They would be in their whites and stuff like that. But we, we uh, that's the only time the, the grunts guy would put up the tennis net. Other, other times the net is down and we play in small goal soccer. We might play a little volleyball. We play cricket in there, you know, and it was fenced off, right? So so when, he, when, they, when they would start, we know they wouldn't last more than half an hour in the sun, right? So we just wait outside the fence and we wait for them to stop. And then we when they stop, the net is up. So we just get one, maybe have one ball and we hit, 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 hit until, you know, until, you know, the ball go over the, into the bushes and we can't find it anymore or something like that, you know. Okay. So we didn't have any formal, formal training, but there was a guy named um, Alan Cook who became the national coach of Grenada. He came to Grenada and he um, told everybody that uh, he went to Wimbledon, right? And back then you had Google or anything to fact check that this guy was, he didn't say one <laughs> Wimbledon, he, he's played in Wimbledon at that level, right? So he came to the island, white chap, Alan Cook, I can never forget his, his name, and they made him the national coach. So he was going around schools. So he came to our school, PBC, mm. and he gave us a, um, a little tennis lesson, you know what I mean? And I can never forget my first tennis lesson was Alan Cook, and he showed me, well, you're trying to really hit the ball at waist high, you know? So you have to move your body, move back or forward. That's all I remember he said, you know, maybe he showed us how to grip the racket or something like that. And, but well, it was a whole class, so it wasn't like individual one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay. That was my that was my first tenure, and from that I just just played whenever we had the chance. And um, but when I came to Canada, my my older siblings had already they know I'm a good table tennis player, so they they enrolled me at uh, Tonkler Park Tennis Club. So I was I had a junior membership there. So when I came that summer, I had something to do because I came in in May May 10, 76. And I didn't go to school until September. So mm -hmm. at that time, they had to play tennis. And actually, that was my first job. They gave me a job. I had a job there as a, as a monitor of the tennis court. So when people come, I'll write a little receipt. <laughs> and they pay $5 and they can play. And it was a fee as you play. And I was the one. So that was my first experience of dealing with Canadians and, you know, mm -hmm. having to collect money and give receipts and things like that. So. Okay. So now you, you, how did you become a coach? Because not everybody that plays or that everybody that were a champion or something are good coaches. And generally they say champions don't make good coaches. And <laughs> Isaiah is laughing. Isaiah, tell me why you're laughing. <laughs> it's true. Oh, you're watching something else or you, you, you're muted. It's true. <laughs> so what's it's different true. about Coach Ian? He's agreeing with you. Champions don't make good coaches. <laughs> that's, a, that's a true saying. Because <laughs> we normally we don't have any patience or maybe we have enough. We have so much natural ability, we can't impart it on someone else. Yes. You know? But so this champion here, didn't. I, I didn't have, I was from the wrong track. I didn't have coach, a coach to teach me tennis and spend time with me. We just had to play as kids together. And after a while, you, you know, somebody picked up and you think, if he can do it, I can do it. And that sort of thing, right? So I learned the hard way. So that's why it was easy for me to impart on other kids because it wasn't like, I, I played tennis for like maybe 20 years before I realized to hit the backhand, you have to change the grip. You know, I used to hit it with the same grip, right? I never knew, nobody showed me, right? I watched it on TV, but I wasn't realizing that they actually changed the grip. The they hit the backhand, they landed backhand. Yeah. So, so I had one grip and uh, as one day, I, you know, I was an adult at the time and I, I took a tennis lesson and the guy showed me, well, you got it. And then it dawned on me, wait a minute, <laughs> I was playing for so long, never knew how to change the grip uh, in the backhand, you know? So, so, so I, I, I learned the hard way. So I, I just want to make it easier for kids now. They don't have to go through all that trouble. You know, this is how you do it. 
So Isaiah, did you know that your coach was a champion or you just thought he was a, just somebody who can coach? Oh, and then I did not know that he was actually a champion. Uh -huh. So <laughs> he, he's, that's good. <laughs> he doesn't have the arrogance. <laughs> So are anybody learning anything new about coach here today? Everything. <laughs> Especially the Afro, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I think just don't grow it out again. I think Sorry? you don't grow. I think coach should grow it again. Yeah, I agree, buddy. I like yeah. <laughs> coach, I you don't think look... I should bring back the fro, eh? Yes. Yeah, you, don't look any... you don't look any different, coach. Maybe you age a little bit, but you look the same. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, we're just we're just missing the hair, but we can yeah. help with that. <laughs> what's your secret, man? Yeah, what's the secret? <laughs> Maybe go back yeah, to drinking the cocoa. Just, what about we bottle it and we mass produce tea. it and make some money with it? That's it's secret. the cocoa tea. The cocoa tea. <laughs> the cocoa tea. That's what yeah. it's <laughs> <missing. laughs> Aiden, uh, you look pretty bored back there, I, and I can tell from an athletic point of view when you're not active it, it, and just hearing adults talk it's probably boring you 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 wish you were outside running or cycling or something because it is a lovely day um anything special you want to say Eden? um just that Eden's a great coach um um he's just a great coach um i really appreciate it uh first time you like taught me like the forehand grip um it really improved my forehand and, and same with the back end. Mm. So tennis or hockey? Um, do you do you do track as well? Yeah, I did a bit of running. Um, mm -hmm. Every like Tuesday and Thursday, I would have track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll do it with my one of my friends on the street. So, is there anything you can transfer from tennis because you have to learn how to grip? backhand, forehand change techniques. Is there anything there that you can transfer to hockey or is there anything in hockey you transfer to tennis? Um, maybe like the forehand shot. Um, it's kind of like the same motion, kind of. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think there's a lot of interchangeable skills between the two sports. Just um, mm -hmm. you have to be a good athlete. You have to have good endurance. Um, you have to have good hand-eye coordination. Like when you're playing hockey, you got to tip the puck in. When you're playing right. tennis, you got to hit the ball. Um, yeah, you just got you, you to have you got to be an athlete. Oh, endurance. Um, it, 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 I, I've been blessed with athletic. Both both me and my wife were very athletic growing up. I I used to play high level soccer and I was a runner. And my wife played varsity volleyball and football. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I got four kids and. Uh, it is my oldest, and um, I devoted a lot of time into his development. He was just, he was just a natural. He's just, um, uh, he crawled at six months. He walked at ten months. He played <laughs> hockey at four years old. He's playing hockey at four, playing at six year old. Uh -huh. One of the best players on his team. He plays AAA hockey, so it's, it's a big commitment. It's five six days a week. Um, he's done like AAA lacrosse, AAA baseball. Ooh. He was doing like tennis with with Ian too on the side, but it's. It's just hard to juggle everything with working a full-time job and juggling four, three other kids with Aiden and trying to be everywhere. And it's, um, I guess it's divide and conquer with my wife. And, um, you know, it, it takes a village to raise these kids. And, you know, um, I don't know where the end game is. Um, I just know at the end of the day, like, I'm trying my best to raise a good kid. And um, I'm trying to do what God gave me the abilities to do and um, try to teach them the right way to live life. <laughs> I'm not perfect, man. I'm I'm no saint, right? But uh, you know, I'm meeting great people along the way, like like Ian. It's just been just been a blessing in our lives, and um, you know, you can never have enough mentors for these kids. Uh, you you just giving me goose goosebumps, and I mean, <laughs> congratulations and thank God for you for the energy you put in in, because I know hockey takes a lot from a parent, and then to still do tennis and be you know. A, a finalist to get all the way there to have that level of commitment from the player and from the parent and Aiden no matter what you end up doing I mean your dad and I guess your, your siblings and your mom are they're putting in the work 
my kids play soccer and I know how much work we put in and I heard from hockey parents, it's nothing close. So, I mean, congrats, congrats and keep making yourself and your parents proud and your coaches, your mentors. Um, and, and remember to tell people about what you've learned and who you learn it from and, and so on and get people together, try, you know, try and let each one help each other. And what we're doing here today is to try and recognize the contributions people make. And as young as you are, you're making contributions already. So thank you. Mr. Erskine, are we gonna see a little bit of Gabriel? I tried to get him in right now, to be honest with you. Um, I asked my wife to send him in. Okay. Uh, I mean, where, where, where's Gabriel? Oh, he's, he's coming. He's coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. There he is. Uh. <laughs> good, good morning, Gabriel. Good morning. Your coach is here. Hi, Gabriel. How are you doing? Hi. I'm good. <laughs> How, nice, nice. How old is Gabriel? Five. Oh, wow. You do. <laughs> It's five, the age is five, eh? Like Isaiah started at five. So, Gabriel, tell me a little bit of a coach. Well, all I like about him is he's nice. <laughs> I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> and he's helping yeah, Gabriel, you to Gabriel love tennis. Gabriel on seven, and I thought he was seven. Because <laughs> he's still pretty tall for five. He has me. I first met him. Yeah, and Gabriel, coach is helping you to love tennis or more than tennis. So t tell me a little bit about you and coach and tennis. Well, I don't know much. That's all I know. I don't know much at all. Wow. <laughs> talker, eh? Shut you up, eh? Shut that is talker. very, very talker. impressive. Talker. <laughs> yeah. Talker. Tell them how coach is helping you. Well, coach is helping me to play very nicely. Oh, okay. To calm, to be calm and relaxed and stuff like that. Yes. Tell us some of the games you like. Which one of the games you like? What's your favorite game? You want me to tell them what the game is? It starts with fruit. Yeah. What's it called? Fruit Ninja. Fruit Ninja! <laughs> 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 That's my favorite game. I introduced them to graduation game, all different games, but somehow you always. Eat. Isaiah might know that game, so you might have to um, hook up with Isaiah at some point. So, Coach, do all you play? You, well, we just learned Isaiah and Aiden don't really know each other. So, you're coaching different areas, or are they all in the same area, different times, or different age groups? So, how? how why? Why? Do, why don't you? your players know each other what? because uh, because for, for instance a aiden he plays other sports right so he doesn't really come around much when he comes oh. around he wants to play with me he doesn't want to play the other kids okay. so it's more like a one-on-one -on -one thing with him right he have group yeah. sessions you know he's not hitting enough balls to be playing a group session he'll just leave run away you know dad saying like where is he he's supposed to be playing and he doesn't really like it so you know, he likes to he likes he likes to be always active. He has a lot of energy, right? That's Aiden, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's there's Janice and and I and Idea. They they've come in the group sessions, so they've participated from since five years old to how old is he now? Maybe ten. So they Nine. always come uh, every year. She would sign him up, and he would participate in the group sessions. Mm -hmm. and, and Gabriel. It's just new. I just met him this summer and it was COVID. So he never got a chance to partic participate with the other kids or anything like that. Because um, the COVID shut down, just shut everything down. Right. And I don't have too many kids on the court, you know, because mm -hmm. of COVID, um, you know, different um, protocols and different things that they had for tennis in Ontario. We, did, we weren't able, supposed to have many kids on the court. So it was just more one-on-one -on -one with him. So hopefully mm -hmm. next year when they open up things, we can bring them all together again and have these um, group sessions where they can have that camaraderie and other kids, you know, get to know other kids' names and stuff like that. So we hope for, you know, next next summer to, to bring it back, maybe have a summer league, uh, like a summer camp or some sort of thing. 
and um, mm. yeah, so that that's excellent. That's so I'm sorry, I didn't catch the end there. And I just wanted to plug my um, IFTA, Ian Ferguson Tennis Academy. I wanna I wanna push that because um, Janice and Janice and um, and Isaiah came to it. That's something I started in the winter time, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to you know keep it going. Just want to bring. It's like an outreach program where you can bring kids from who never played tennis before. They would probably play soccer and basketball because they are more popular, but they would never play tennis. But we have mm -hmm. tennis rackets, so we put tennis rackets in their hands and give them an opportunity to just at least learn the game. If mm -hmm. they go off to college someday and somebody said, you know, you want to play tennis, at least they know a little bit about, about tennis. They might not play it as a primary sport, but. Yeah, so we, um, I'm trying to get that going. And right now it's, it's still virtual. I don't have a website or anything like that, but it's just one of the things I, I keep in the back of my mind to give out rackets. I loan rackets out to kids and, um, you know, as loaner rackets before they go out and spend money to buy rackets, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. So people always donate rackets to me so I can give out to the kids. Yeah, it's a great idea. Um, so they can test if this is something they want to do before their parents make that big investment. Uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So we're coming to the end. Um, you're also, I should say, you're also a mobile barber. You, you, you have a business, you go around, you sent me a card. Yes, yes, yes. And it, it, start, it started with the Afro, you know, always into my hair and, you know, <laughs> so, so I was able to, um, you know, learn to braid hair, cut hair at a very early age because I had six sisters, right? And like for me to get my hair braided, so the Afro would come out like, like you saw it there, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had to do a lot of chores, you know, <laughs> and I thought it was easier to learn to braid my hair than to do all this. They make me do everything, you know? And I'm like, oh, Nithi, I'm too tired. I don't think I want to, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, man, I just did all this thing. I was like a little gopher doing all this work for them, you know? So I just figure maybe I should learn to braid my own hair. And from doing that now, I learned to cut my own hair and cut other friends' hair and braid other people's hair and things like that. So I was always a hair guy. And, and you see my, my daughter, Jan Janelle, is kind of taken to that next step level where she's actually manufacturing old hair products and, you know, have a have a, a, a e-commerce business going with with hair products like shampoo, conditioner, all for natural mm -hmm. hair. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are going back to their natural hair because you know it's a big multi-billion dollar industry with black people and their hair, right? Right. Yeah, the <laughs> dominated that. So, so. Quickly, I have to talk about music. Um, and I don't know if you you the panelists uh, know of about you being a bass player. You're a multifaceted yeah. man. You're not just play, about sports. Play, You're also on music on the side. Anybody knows about that? I think I think I, Richie knows about that. Wendy's, think, you remember Wendy's? I think I saw a picture of you, but I wasn't sure it was you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, think you performed, I think you performed at a local restaurant, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, right. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, Ian's a hustler. He's a jock of all trades. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a true. <laughs> I'd say that is a West Indian thing and it definitely a Grenadian it. thing. <laughs> you always have to have a hustle on the side, right? It's yes. Awesome. I think basically we don't put all our eggs in one basket, right? Absolutely. And um, you, you, can't, you can't do that today either. You know, you can't be dependent on anyone. What do they say? You know, have uh, multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. and uh well, coach Ian, you know that's that's how i've always lived and it's nice to see a, another hustler um you know <laughs> <laughs> digging deep and you know getting it done i appreciate that very much and uh yeah that's that's why i think i think that's why i gravitate towards coach and uh, every opportunity i get i'm trying to uh, i'm trying to get him on the court um, oh very nice because yeah. you are also a player so do you assist with the programs uh, no, um, you know, we just met coach this, uh, this summer. This um, summer. My, my focus has been trying to get Gabriel to love the sport, which uh, coach has really made it easy to do. Um, mm -hmm. But then I also want to try and carve some time for myself, but I wanted to give priority to my son. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you know, uh, so coach takes us for an hour. Uh, he'll take Gabriel for 45 minutes and then he gives me the last 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, so, 
Um, but uh, you know, it's it's worked out really well. But I think as as time goes on, uh, I, I I want our relationship with coach to uh, to grow. We're trying to uh, we're trying to get my son into a uh, a tennis uh, throughout the year. Uh, so we'll be playing indoors in the winter, mm-hmm. and then uh, hopefully try to find a way to get coach on board with it and uh, and uh, and and see what we can do and where we can go from there. Okay, so we're basically at the end. Um, so normally what we do, because Coach Ian was one of the guys that brought us the, you know, the romance of the 70s, the goosebumps, the, all the girls, well, I imagine with the hair, I'm, I'm from the rural areas, he's from the city, so I can imagine those girls <laughs> that was after just the hair. <laughs> yeah, the Jackson 5. The fool got me a lot of accolades, but I was too shy. I was too shy to talk to girls. So, you know, if they give me a wave or something, that was good enough for me. I wouldn't even go up and say hi, you know, I just. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure I Janice would agree with me that uh, when you're shy, it's even better for us girls. We, we want to know more. <laughs> I think, I think being humble is definitely one of Coach Ian's uh, qualities. Uh, oh, yeah. Isaiah's recent haircut. <laughs> also yes. from him. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes. So yes, and as a yes, women, we do appreciate men. Men being a little bit on the humble side. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> men with nice hair and being humble. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Thank you all for being here and for uh, Coach Ian sharing with us. Um, bringing us back these me- beautiful memories. Um, before he leaves us, um, we usually give roses. Uh, that's my cousin coined this term. Let's give them their roses while they're alive. And so <laughs> I just like you each to just um, maybe a, a sat in the bottom, uh, Mr. from what I'm seeing. Mr. Hood, are you able to talk now? Nothing there. Okay, so Mr. Erskine and uh, Gabriel, what what ni- roses? What nice words would you like to leave Coach with today? I appreciate, and I'm very grateful that Coach approached us in the parking lot, and um, we followed. I, I'm grateful that we followed up with his invitation. Um, it's been. Uh, it's been very hopeful for us. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience, and um, it's just opened us to a, you know um, another avenue and chapter in life that uh, we can look forward to to growing. So, Coach, I just want you to know that we really appreciate you, and uh, thank you very much for all that you're doing for us and for Gabriel. We really appreciate thank that. You, thank you. Thank you. Isaiah, and, oh, Isaiah's just run out. Maybe to use the. <laughs> oh, you're back, Isaiah and Mom. Any roses for Coach? Um, I just want to say um, thank you, Coach Ian, for teaching me and for helping me learn new things with tennis. And you tell me to practice more so I can become the um, the best sport. I so I can be the like the best tennis player. And um, okay. <laughs> Um, thanks Isaiah thank you I also wanted to say sorry go ahead I'm just thanking Isaiah for giving me the roses (laughs) and I (laughs) wanted and I wanted to say thank you for also approaching us in the parking lot (laughs) as we as we walked through with and giving us the business card I think Nick, you're frozen. I do have that video to show um, oh, okay. for Isaiah, but I have it on my cell phone. But um, it does melt my heart when I see it because when Coach approached us, um, just the fact that he saw something in Isaiah mm-hmm. and how it blossomed very quickly when um, Isaiah did um, start going to those lessons. So I'm going to just show it through my cell phone in okay. front of the camera. I don't know how well people are going yeah. to be. Try. I don't, I don't know myself. Yeah. I'll try. Okay. Yeah. I think we're seeing it. Oh, 
Oops. No, you. you. Stay, Oops, no, back, 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 right. Okay, I'll play it again. Maybe just try to make sure it's in front. Yes, yeah, stay there. Hit play. There, so that was it. <laughs> They're very lovely. Yeah. So just that energy and just that focus, that focus that Isaiah um, got, and it was because of a really good coach. And thank you, Coach Ian, for that. Yeah, and he was thank probably five, five years old at the time, right? He was, he was five then, yes. Yeah. So five years later, he still loves it. He's blossoming. Awesome. Yeah. And I mean, this, the video here, because it's a little way you can't see his, how bashful he's sim. And now he's just opened up like a rose today versus that video. So it's, it's nice. It, it, the confidence that the, the game and the coach were able to help him build. So now we're going to another superstar, Mr. Aiden. I just want to say thank you, Coach Ian, for all you've done to improve my skills in tennis and um, being a great person. Um, yeah. Mr. Red Wing, you, you're a Red Wing fan? Uh, no, it's just the team I play on. It's like oh, Toronto. okay. <laughs> it's, his, uh, it's his hockey team. He plays for the Toronto Red Wings in the Toronto area. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> He, he actually has a practice pretty soon, so I okay. Yeah, so we're I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take him. So he's trying to get a head start, I guess. Thank you, thank you for being here. And uh, we're basically everybody's uh, giving the coach that. I don't know if you want to give another rose. I, I give you in uh, a dozen roses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you all, and thank you, coach, for sharing your story with us. Thank you for help bringing us back into those great memories and the memories i mean that would live we hope to live on forever and ever because those things as the songs say memories don't uh die like people do they stay and every time we think about you know aiden or uh gabriel or isaiah and and we can see you and what you did coming through to them. So we look forward to what you're impacting onto the next generation. Thank you all very much. Have a great okay. day and we will catch up sometime in the future. I'll be following Aiden much. and Isaiah and uh, Gabriel. Thank <laughs> Take you very much. Care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. And thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. 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 I'm just going to say the channel is Romancing Grenada Karakompiti Matnik. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we will be with you. Next show will be about uh, the Grenadian, the resilient spirit of Grenada. And we will be celebrating the people who've um, survived COVID and um, mourning with those who lost loved ones. Take good care now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.